Thank you everyone for joining in. My name is Vaishak and I run the client technology and solution consulting practice for Adobe in India. Today, we have an exciting topic and a very exciting panel. We have without a playbook, the changing face of customer experience in CPG and retail as a topic. Definitely exciting as we are facing this particular changing times nowadays. Now, we have an eminent panel for the discussion today. I have the privilege and pleasure to introduce our panel today. First up, I would like to introduce our very own Kunal Mehta, who is a retail technology leader. Kunal is a passionate retail technology professional with over 20 years of experience in executive technology leadership roles. Having worked with leading organizations like Fab India, Raymond Limited, Trent Limited, Reliance Retail, and so on, he's also a mentor, come advisor to startups, helping them strategize their future roadmaps. How do you welcome Kunal? Thanks, thanks so much for this warm introduction. Thank you. Next up, we have Amit Tiwari, Vice President Marketing, Havels India Limited. Amit has solid experience of our 18 years of understanding consumers and markets. And more importantly, converting those insights into marketing strategies, all of this backed with his rigorous work ethic. He's also a thought leadership champion to make consumer centricity at the core of all business decisions making at Havels. He does that by guiding the consumer inside journey for the organization. Welcome, Amit. Glad to have you with us. Thank you so much, Rak. Thanks, thanks for the nice introduction. Thank you so much. Thank you. We also have Gagan Arora, Marketing Director at IQ. Gagan is the Marketing Director at IQ, which stands for iQuest On and On. It is an upcoming premium performance smartphone brand. He's an experienced professional with 14 plus years of experience in marketing, analytics, as well as product building. Gagan has also built and, uh, you know, scale two consumer habit changing businesses in India. He was the chief marketing officer for Food Panda in India, as well as the founder for printvenue.com. He is also an Accenture alumni. Welcome, Gagan. Happy to have you here in our panel. Okay. Finally, we have Subranshu Singh, Global Head Brand and Marketing, Royal Enfield. Subranshu has managed large profit centers and diverse brands across catalogs like deodorants, skincare, household care, among many others. He was the customer channel program manager in Unilever and the national customer marketing head for DIGO in India. He has done extensive work on small and organized retail payments as the director of marketing for Visa. And currently he is responsible for customer facing initiatives for 2000 plus retail outlets of Royal NP. He has deep experience in customer journey based transformations. Pleasure to have you with us here, Shubhranshu. Thank you, Vesha. glad to be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Now that we have our panel, I would like to kickstart this discussion by a rapid fire question. Oh, uh, uh, perfect. So before I get into the rapid fire questions, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have my co-host, my co-moderator, Raman with us. Raman Kalra, he's a partner and advisory at PwC India with over 28 years of experience in the industry of consulting. Raman has a very superb track record in conceptualizing, growing and managing businesses. He is known as the turnaround man and he loves to challenge the status quo and take the road less travel to build and grow new businesses. Welcome, Raman. Thank and you, Ajay. Absolute pleasure to be here and uh, a warm hello to everybody else on the panel. Excellent. So, Raman, I was saying to kick stick and start off, I thought, unlike the traditional way, let's start with a rapid fire question so that everybody get to answer in just 10 seconds and then we get into open ended questions, right? So the title of this particular discussion is very, uh, you know, interesting. It says, without a playbook, the changing face of CX, uh, customer experience in retail and CPG. But my rapid fire questions is the panel could answer in 10 seconds uh, or less. 
let's say you are writing you are eminent personalities you can definitely write this playbook about changing customer experience let's say you are writing this particular playbook what is your first chapter call if i can start with subhranshu well i'd say the customer is still queen the customer is king that would always be the first chapter excellent jagan if i can go to you uh what do you stand for and who do you stand for Wow. Okay. Amit, what is the first? Time? I think I would I would actually circumvent in three different ways, which is the three T's, which is trust, transparency, and technology. Clever, clever. Sunal, over to you. Wow, interesting. But I will still say customer is the king. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. And with that, Raman, over to you. Yeah. No. Thanks. Thanks, Aishak. I think that's a that's a great. Uh... great set up uh, to set the tone and uh, i'm so glad to hear you know three or three of you actually talk about talk about customer and i know everybody meant customer in some form and shape there is no business without customers and uh, gagan you spoke about uh, you know you can just repeat gagan what you exactly said in the same line what do you stand for and who do you stand for exactly you know we uh, why i kind of you know picked this pick this up uh, specifically is because uh, we did a global uh, consumer uh, goods Uh, industry survey worldwide as we will see along with consumer goods forum and this was more focused on uh, preparing for the future it's very very recent you know just about a, a few months in you know, or 2 3 months back only and there were five macro trends that came out of uh, that report one of the macro trend which was basically so I'll, i'll i'll quickly talk about the five trends first and i'll you know uh, say why you know what you said uh, resonated so closely with me uh the, the first trend is uh, you know the store of the future you know we we want to really uh, people are uh, struggling people are, are thinking that how a store of the future will look like you know which is you know in the omni channel environment uh, technology will continue to revolution revolutionize online offline coming together in indian context you know when when the whole geo mart uh, kicks into real existence at the mass level you know it can again transform uh, rules of the game we don't know how google will uh, step in google shopping you know in and out they have been trying experimenting worldwide uh, in india also we never know when it becomes on a on a fourth gear or a fifth gear and and again change is a few things in experience so so i think the store of the future uh, is very important where where the traditional marketing channels will will continue to blur you know between retailers and cpg you know i think that the lines are getting very very blurred and the second one the second macro trend which is uh, gagan what you spoke about is actually the brand relevance so so what unanimously what came out is consumers will keep raising their expectations for the brand that they engage with and and they will continue to seek more and more work more and more loyalty uh, with the purpose driven brand so as a brand you know what are we known for what do we stand for it has to go beyond a tag line it has to go beyond a logo it also has to go beyond a few very smart creative videos you know which we see all the time you know uh, there are some very very deep emotional connect videos that come it has to really uh, translate into every action that we do as a brand so every touch point with the consumer you know inside and outside has to uh, resonate with uh, what we you know stand for and what we are known for as a brand i think that is that was by the way uh, you know the second big macro trend that came out of this study out of the five trends uh then you know very quickly summing up you know the third was around digital supply chain uh with, you know with the whole omni channel and uh, online offline you know the 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 hub and spoke model uh, multiple fulfillment points we don't know how the supply chain will keep evolving as we go forward so i think the whole digital supply chain became the third key point interestingly the fourth uh, in, since we are talking about consumer goods as an industry uh, the fourth macro trend very interestingly which came out is on on the future of food you know and that's where people spoke about you know it has to be it has to be uh, very very you know uh, and this is i think more of a covid driven uh, sentiments and emotions in people that that the wellness and the health and and the quality uh, uh, has taken far more importance paramount paramount importance in everybody's mind so the future of food is becoming very very important and and you know we are not surprised that all the agrochemical companies or the fertilizing companies or the food companies are investing a lot in 
uh, you know, uh, in uh, in green uh, food, if I speak so, you know, uh, on health food, if I speak so. And the last and the fifth macro trend was around uh, ESG, you know, which is, uh, you know, um, I don't have to repeat that, you know, really, you know, all the leaders know the importance of ESG, how much it is growing, you know, more and more. And with these five macro trends, uh, it came out that, you know, any brand which is into uh, CPG or the retail side, we really have to keep uh, these uh, aspects in mind for the future growth. And that's where, why I picked up uh, these five macro trends to, you know, start the discussion uh, today is because, uh, you know, when we talk about consumer experience, when we talk about marketing, when we talk about uh, marketing ROI or effectiveness or, or chief marketing officer's role, more and more becoming like a chief integrator role, you know, which is you got, you got to really, a CMO is not just about marketing anymore, a CMO is about growth. And, and moment we say that the CMO is about growth, you know, it really brings about uh, the lines between CTO and CMO of Garing. So if I ask Kunal, Kunal will say that, you know, I'm not a CMO, maybe I'm, I'm a tech leader, but I run on the mandates of, you know, marketing a lot because it is MarTech. It is not just marketing anymore. And there is, a, there is a lot of deep tech in that, you know. So the lines are blurring so much and that makes it even more exciting. We don't have a CFO on the call. You know, if, had we, uh, if we had the CFO on the call, the CFO would say that, you know, uh, given the one thing that pandemic has taught us is that uh, there is no free lunch. And, and, and one thing that pandemic has taught us is that, uh, you know, uh, money is uh, to be preserved for a rainy day. You know, when we were all kids, uh, or let's say many, many, you know, 20 years back, you know, people used to teach their kids that save money for a rainy day. So, so this pandemic has brought back that sentiment, you know, in the industry and also among the consumers. So I think those things become uh, very, very uh, important as we uh, go forward. Now, in these, in these blurring lines, uh, when we talk about consumer experience, and then when we relate the five macro trends that I briefly, you know, uh, touched upon, and those reports are all available, you know, you can, I'm happy to share, or you can download on the net. Then we got to see that, uh, what is the experience factor? Or what is the consumer connect factor that is coming across all these five parameters? So whether it is a, a omni-channel store of the future experience, whether it is the supply chain experience, which means there you are know, 100% visibility, end-to-end -end visibility, not only for the B2B enterprise, but also for the consumer, you know, uh, you know uh, side of story. Today, when, when we order anything on, uh, you know, when we order anything on, let's say, Swiggy, of course, one can map on a, on a Swiggy, you know, uh, app that where exactly is the food. But, uh, you know, likewise, when a lot of uh, e-commerce channels, when we order, there is a fair amount of visibility. But that visibility is still, you know, point A, point B, point C, point D driven. Can that really translate into absolutely real visibility that, okay, if my my package has been picked up from, let's say, Delhi Nazafgarh warehousing of Amazon, you know, uh, where is it exactly? You know, so so I think the whole transparency in supply chain, digital supply chain, is becoming more and more important. So I think the 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 the, the consumer experience, which is the overarching theme that we are going to talk about today, you know, and, and, and my, my friend Vaishak will, will, will try and nudge, you know, through some exciting questions, you know, a lot more as you go forward. But, but I think it is important that, uh, that customer experience often fails if it is not equally hand in hand dealt with the employee experience or let's say with the uh, partner experience or the vendor experience. So I think experience is a, is, a, is a bigger term, which the time is now important for us to take it just beyond customer and, and, and you know, see that. Uh, so you might define a fantastic process for customer, you know, fully focused on design thinking, human-centered design experience. But if the call center employees and if the people who are, who are the touch points for that process for consumer are not charged up, are not excited, they are not happy, they are not, you know, they haven't bought that uh, change, it is more likely to fail in the consumer side also. So I think therefore the importance of, and that's where the whole concept of uh, return on experience that started coming in, I, I, I still don't know, you know, how many uh, my, my personal and, and we as a firm are, are as a PwC, we believe that a lot of companies have started talking about the shift from ROI to ROX uh, as a more holistic, uh, you know, uh, measurement uh, across the enterprise. But we are we have a long way to go on that. And 
and it is because of some of these you know uh, some of these bits and pieces which which we are talking about together which we'll talk in next in next hour or so that triggered us to really call this session as uh, you know the, the whole without a playbook kind of a thing there is no there is no uh, playbook that one can open and say that okay i should do these 10 things or these are the good practices these are the best practices i follow the practices are changing every day you know like like amit sitting at havels you know might might do something at havels which is you know which others might not have done so i think that the whole there is nothing called as a best practice anymore you know there's so much it, all that is prevalent today is who does the best experiments who does you know uh, which are the bets that you put your money behind and how well you execute those bets it will change the rules of the game so fast as you go forward so i think on that note with that context uh, uh, we really uh, wanted to kick start you know uh, this discussion uh, one thing which i can certainly share you know it might if it might be in interest of uh, some of you or you know the audience uh, we as a firm we released our global entertainment and media outlook report uh, you know a few days back it's a it's a rolling five year report that we release you know so so this is a 21 25 outlook which we release now next year will be 22 to 26 kind of an outlook and and if you talk about the india number and and i'm picking up media here because you know you all are marketers we are you know the, the whole marketing uh, uh, the growth of uh, media industry plays a big role in what we do as as a marketer so so we are we are still talking about you know a close to 11% cagr in next 5 years as a whole you know as, as an industry yeah and uh, while it's a no brainer and uh, it's very obvious that digital is a high two digit you know we are talking about about close to 19 to 20% cagr over next 5 years it will be much more in the next 2 to 3 years than it slows down but over a 5 year horizon we are talking about about 19% cagr what comes as a as a pleasant surprise and but i i always believed it to be so is that tv will continue to grow at about 8% cagr next 5 years so you know we are we as a country we you know we are uh, we, we keep defining the global trends a lot so we as a nation you know are always an and economy it's not digital and ju- and just digital in 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 the media world it will be a coexistence of uh, tv and digital and print print is going to grow at about 2% they of course will face lot bigger challenge and in the same fashion in in the retail and consumer good from our perspective it's going to be uh, again an and economy instead of an or economy and it's going to be the the online and offline and the omni channel kind of coming together so so if, if there is a brand that says that i'm i'm focused only on online and uh, would would happy to hear more from gagan on that you know if a brand says that we are online exclusive brand i always uh, put a question back to them that even if you are the best of the brands you know by notches by miles you know you can't have let's say more than 20% market share in online and if you get a 20% market share and if online itself is only 10% of indian retail market you will be a 2% market share so so no serious brands can ever be happy and satisfied with 2% market share so you, you know you are so so to say that we are online exclusive is a is a way of, and excuse me for that to say that we are online online exclusive is a way of saying that you know okay we are getting our act together for offline and by the way we will be there and you know that's me you know it's, it's a candid discussion but that's my personal thought on that so on that note uh, let's have a great exciting discussion i'll i'll hand it over back to vaishak you know uh, and let's uh, kick start this piece thank you thank you raman for this topics so let's hear from the brands and their leaders as such and as you mentioned we just all of us got this innovation wake up call and let's start with that how have you innovated recently in your business when it comes to customer experience and i would like to pass it on to amit if we, if we can start with you amit amit you are on mute please sorry so hi sorry so thanks vishak i think raman uh, very very uh, good insights and i think uh, excellent thought a lot of things have been music to the ears because that's what we actually hear just before i get into the first question that vishak had talked about i think uh, if most of my partners or most of my uh, fellow panelists have talked about that uh definitely customers the king and customers have been and I, i think there is no second thought you know but i think one thing that we really need to keep in mind that their wardrobes have changed now and that is that is very very important to know because uh, definitely the larger parallels will remain the same but their wardrobes have definitely changed coming to the point i think see uh, as as raman very nicely laid down the entire foundation across the entire uh, discussion today 
uh, every business and if you talk about specifically in consumer durables consumer electronics business uh, which is primarily primarily a traditional business around 80 90% traditional business we still have to change not the way the consumer is attracted. also our customers which is also an intermediary which is the trade partners which is the dealer the distributor and retailer how we can actually change and transform that entire particular ecosystem and how does it actually work in that particular uh, uh, ecosystem so it's like change a new model which is called auto model which is just an online to offline so any particular person who can actually see my particular online which is shop.havens.com and any particular dealer near by so for example vishak says in xyz place of uh, bangalore or somewhere else and you have three deep particular distributors can be shown depending upon your choice the price price will remain the same you can actually decide which particular distributor to go with. why did they actually need to it so then if you actually see the, the literal meaning of crisis in mandarin it has two parts to it when it actually says is a fear and second part is an opportunity and we actually have to pick up the opportunity because if most of the dealers today didn't have the opportunity to get a footfall because physically people not coming you really need to reinvent your particular thing so i think changing the entire landscape of going to a physical store and getting things that you need to do from your particular distributor who you believe is your particular trusted mom and pop store you do i think that's a big biggest revolution that i can think from a consumer durable industry standpoint yeah i think that's a i'll, I'll just add to it because you touched uh, one of my sensitive chord by saying that because i ran a startup in 2015 and 16 called store say it was online to offline focused on consumer durables and electronics and uh, we met you know, a lot of uh, brands at that time the whole idea was that uh, you know people would always want to buy with uh, with a sense of price discovery and in this industry in particular which was touched upon amit uh, any showroom that we walk into you know 99% of the times you will end up buying at a price which is lower than the price which is tagged in the showroom true so, so for example if, if a showroom says that mrp 80000 counted price 70000 you might end up buying at maybe 65000 66000 correct that price is never listed that price correct. is never listed so correct. so that's where that's where the whole concept of neighborhood stores and the price discovery and the price bargain in an online fashion became you know uh, very very relevant yeah so that's what it's called draman you rightly said that's called a relationship price so i yeah. have a relationship with this particular dealer my father used to buy it from his father and i am finding buying from his and that's called a relationship price that is actually been absolutely i completely agree with you so 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 if we can hear from you how have you recently innovated with this <laughs> so i think uh, you know let me address the retail part first because you know our, our brand is a motorcycling brand and naturally with the pandemic uh, things came to a halt last april there was nothing that was out on the roads uh, i think we take we made a conscious decision and i you know the the big levers to move were engagement exploration and i would say to a degree entertainment as well so you know there is a very large community it's almost 8 million people who are on our social platforms uh, they are interested in royal enfield as a way of life it's a, it's a brand that gets you to think about exploration it's a bonded community they have genuine engagement uh, at much higher than industry levels with the brand so one of the things that we were doing continuously was of trying to get a sense of what are the consumer tickets what are they interested in what is the kind of dialogue so whether it's convenience you know i want to maintain my motorcycle but in this environment i don't want to go to a to a dealer service station you have service on wheels you have pick up and drop you have a variety of ways in which to teach them to do it themselves uh, you had you know exploration around the past rides you had lots of content you had customs uh, you know builders doing broadcasts so we became effectively a publishers platform and i think that was a very big move for us and we invested heavily in analytics to try and understand and to try and integrate and have a single view of customer because i think that is going to be a very very precious commodity as we go ahead uh, and as life becomes more omni channel and hybrid so i think those were the big investments from a structural point of view and uh, you know one of the panelists was mentioning earlier about customer centricity i think in the in the changed environment whether it is retail or relationship with brand it is truly going to be customer centric because people do not have to go to a shop online or offline to transact and you know if you see the examples from let's say china in the cpg space it is replete with you know things like huyo.com or vivo 
that you know you don't have to go anywhere to transact the transactions floating in the ecosystem with which you are engaging so i think uh, you know i think the first steps to take the, in that direction are to understand your consumer have a have a iterative and developing view of them be very very proactive in terms of engagement and then let them explore and entertain themselves as well it's not it's not only about the transaction so those i think were the big innovations they manifested themselves as something called make it your own which was a configurator which allowed people to personalize or customize their motorcycle and also an re app which is now almost a million strong community that we launched so it was a royal enfield app these were the tangible forms of it but i was just trying to talk about the spirit and the context of it excellent fact, thank you yeah in in fact shubhan to your brand itself uh, stands for an experience that's right people people who buy a royal enfield bike you know they buy keeping in mind the experience that they are going to get you know uh through the through various rides and groups and all i think most of it so i think it's a very very good good insight here yeah. right yeah let's hear it from gagan and iq how have you innovated recently what has been the cx changes that you have seen Sure, Vaishak. Uh, so, you know, as we heard from Chubranchu and uh, Amit also. So, see, uh, IQ belongs to Vivo Smartphone Group and somewhere the challenges were similar also because Vivo has been a strong name in uh, offline market or we call it mainline now. And obviously, uh, now you clearly see that there's a channel differentiation in the market that, you know, uh, there are certain buyers who would always go to a store, experience a product before buying. And then there are certain kind of consumer who, who are okay buying from, you know, uh, big retail, uh, e-retail outlets like Flipkart, Amazon. so how do we tackle these kind of changes so a, a same brand can differentiate also or rather a same corporate group uh, can differentiate also so a same same goods can be manufactured in same facility but it can be uh, made for different kind of consumer so identifying macro trend as well as micro trend both is very important uh, when it comes to macro trend as i said some people are buying online some many people are buying offline so how do we balance that out in our product portfolio something it was very important for us and that's why iq exists but uh, it's not about you know we are just selling smartphone to a certain set of consumer the philosophy of the product has to be really really clear who we are making it for so uh, for us is that should we keep it something you know very similar which is from vivo portfolio uh, which is present in retail store versus something different which is made for just let's say uh, a gen z online consumer so this is where entire uh, you know study group what people are looking for uh, these things came in and we fixed on one segment you know people who are looking for really really performance oriented smartphone uh, same thing you know as it goes for royal enfield experience matters uh, for iq also it said uh, it is not about relation to, relationship driven buying from a store but it's more about what this smartphone can do for me and in terms of performance it has to match my need plus there has to be a social validation because you have to understand consumer if i'm buying something it has to uh, complement my social persona also because uh, again although during pandemic also we are living Uh, in isolation but socially we are always connected so can my product fulfill that need so something we figured that out uh, after that you know uh, let's say one application of uh, the products from iq is performance how do we measure it uh, so let's say it is really really good at gaming but how do i make it how do i make sure that it is reaches out to the right kind of, uh, right kind of consumer and if i'm reaching out how do i measure the effectiveness of my marketing performance uh, so we did this experiment by the way where we uh, started you know uh, reading the gamers using influencers so, right so there are certain gaming streamers on youtube it's a very niche concept so many may not be aware but you if somebody is streaming game on their youtube channel you can literally rate them uh, so we use uh, uh, very influential influencers uh, who would rate using iq smartphones and would go to uh, this the, these gamers stream and a lot of these gaming streamers would get actually a lot of subscribers which will ultimately lead back to the goodwill for the brand itself and the best part about this thing is that you can measure it instantly so your google searches will go up right so uh, this is where innovation comes in you launch a product for a consumer you did something for the consumer and you get to measure it in the end right in one go so something you know uh, with the new brand like iq we are trying to establish that uh, but the roots are same uh, with vivo so very old very strong brand but uh, doing something different uh for a different segment of segment of consumers so that's all this excellent the advantage of being you know digital in order to actually find them where they are and reach out to them and having that personalized messages to actually have our brand recall higher thank you so much for sharing that uh, gagan over to you kunal technology aspect of it so uh, 
So it's been quite interesting, honestly, you know, at the beginning of uh, the pandemic, I was with an X brand. And then at the end of the pandemic, you know, I was with another brand. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, both very traditional retailers, uh, Raymond and Fab India in its own way, you know, um, are kind of leaders in their own way, in their own segments. Uh, but obviously the pandemic changed all of that. Right. The, the way each of these brands thought of themselves, uh, always thought that the customer would walk into their store. All of a sudden, you don't have any of that. Right. Um, all of a sudden, your digital content is is what everything is really working on. Were these brands ready to kind of, you know, absorb that and be ready to reach out to their consumers? No, they weren't. Right. So um, all of a sudden, your digital platforms is your store associate, you know? So your uh, content building that you do on the website, right? uh, the cataloging that you have, the quality of the images that you put up over there, all these things became very, very important, right? So um, the, the way your supply chain works. So I, I think these things uh, kind of started standing out in terms of how the retailers or brands in general have been ready to really move towards the whole omni-channel story. You know, we've always been talking about it for years and years to come now, um, but uh, no one was re really ready to kind of really take it on the face. And that, that's what the pandemic did. It's also helped businesses, you know, start working more closely together, you know, different functions, whether it's supply chain, whether it's IT, whether it's marketing, uh, the strategies have completely changed for each of them. You need to take decisions much, much faster, which none of the retailers usually are wanting to, you know, everything happens at its own speed. Uh, but now you've got, got to take decision in days instead of months and PPT slides happening. People are getting onto calls and taking decisions, you know, so, so that's the another interesting part, which has kind of completely transformed businesses, uh, brought people together, as much as people are aloof, I think it's also brought them together in terms of how to survive uh, uh, this, this, this entire wave which has come through. Um, and the good ones have actually started doing better, right? Uh, so from probably having three or 5% business coming from the online, it's now become 25, 30, 40% for certain retailers also, right? And, and we've seen that huge shift, especially in some of the categories. Uh, so it's, it's been a great journey as, um, you know, as an IT time, I think it was the most um, exciting time for us uh, because all of a sudden from being a support function in so many ways, you know, you're sitting right there in the board meeting now and people are asking, what do we do next and how do we enhance our customer? How do we reach out to our customer better? What are the technologies we can kind of implement over there? Uh, so it's, it's been very exciting time. A lot of people, I think, when they were having fun, I think the IT guys were the one who were, you know, really, really being put out there um, and, and, and trying to really help the organization make these changes. So it's, it's been quite a fruitful journey over the last one, one and a half year to help businesses transform the way they work and the way they think going ahead. Great example, Kunal. That actually reminds me of one of the great innovation one of our customers did in India, right? Which is like they turned their entire photography into virtual photography, right? Using 3D techniques, right? So, and this is a leading e commerce player in India. They actually set up a huge team. So now they don't have to ship this huge furniture or decor items or perishable items from here to there to actually get it photographed. They completely make it in 3D. The advantage is you can serve, serve that to any channel. Tomorrow you want a VR, the 3D content is ready to serve there. And it was amazing to actually see, I mean, brands in uh, developed nations such as Ben and Jerry's ice creams have been doing this for some time, but it was great to see Indian brands actually jumping into this virtual photography. Brand yeah. Yeah. Great example, thank you for sharing that. Now you mentioned a very interesting topic. So I would like to stay on uh, with you for, with the next question. Before that audiences, you have a chance to ask your questions to this esteemed panel. So please do type in your questions. We will be looking at them and we'll be posting that to the panel as well. Now, you talked about this inter-organizational partnership to deliver this promise of customer yes. experience, right? What are your learnings from that? What, what, how have these partnerships evolved, right? Let's say between sales and marketing, between finance and technology and finance yeah. and marketing. 
how, what have you seen how these partnerships, interorganizational partnerships have seen? You know, one of the panels, uh, panelists uh, mentioned about the ROX, right? It's actually gone to that level now where retailers are asking about what is the experience and what is the value of experience that we're bringing on the table now for the customers, right? Every penny that is being spent now is one being questioned, of course, but I think in the rightful manner where, you know, you have the finance guy and the marketing guy now actually sitting together and working. I've never seen that happening before, um, uh, you know, because very different thoughts, processes, uh, the way they think, all of that. Um, but digital is, is is a very different world, right? From your store where you're just talking about rentals and you're talking about the number of store associates. All of a sudden, all those mathematics don't come into play, right? So it all becomes about the number of footfalls on the website. How do we get the customer over there? You know, the CFO is asking questions about are we spending money on social media and analytics? Um, you know, and how many clicks uh, have there, you know, come on by doing or adding a certain technology. So then the kind of questions that, you know, as a retailer, as a finance guy, as a marketing guy, you were asking, right? Those questions have changed completely, which is so interesting. Um, and it's quite refreshing, honestly, you know, because the thought processes have just opened up for everyone. And, uh, you know, you, in the whole digital world, you got to take decisions much, much faster now uh, in, in, in the way you're progressing, right? Because otherwise, uh, you know, I think brand loyalty, again, has become quite frickle, if you ask me. Uh, people move on very, very quickly to the brands. Uh, thanks to the Zen Z, uh, you know, the, 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 the people of our generation or the generation before us also have, have their brand, do not have a, a lot of brand loyalty left nowadays because... The Gen Z is really influencing them. You know, you have, uh, you know, 60s is the new 40s and 40s is the new 20s. And well, I don't even know what to get there below 20s, right? So so the young guys, when they're sitting next to their mom and everyone's in the houses, right? If, if the younger one is going to an Insta and checking new clothes, uh, the mother is going to get influenced by the daughter or the son, right? And, and, and see what's happening over there. And, you know, if they're not moving with them, I mean, with their new generation and all, um, you don't cater to these new ideas, to these new fashions, you're not going to be relevant anymore, right? Because you're sitting at home, you're not going to the store, you're not buying things anymore. So uh, again, coming back to your question, uh, yes, there has been a lot of um, collaboration happening across functions. Uh, people are taking decisions faster and helping each other out faster because it's a matter of survival now for a lot of retailers, right? So, so it's, it's helped a lot of ways where uh, functions come together and work together now. Individual customers and it's 3PL partners. So uh, you've got to change the entire DNA of your supply chain. And, and it's, an, it's, a, it's a very interesting journey. It can be painful, but it can be very interesting if people come together and work right. True, thanks for saying that. The questions have changed and it's, it's interesting that CFO is asking, hey, what's the unique visitor today and what's the conversion rate today, right? So uh, nicely said, Kunal. Gagan, if I can go to you, what have you seen about inter-organizational partnership to delivery costs? So, uh, Vaichik, I'll, I'll tell you two things. Uh, when I was at Accenture, I used to work with a lot of clients where sales and marketing used to work in isolation, right? Uh, <laughs> with the advent of modern channels, like, you know, business which are online first, uh, the sale, there's basically no difference between sales and marketing. And marketing rather owns the PL in more or less sense, right? So the role of finance in a digital first organization is actually relies on somebody who's taking care of the communication because that particular guy can actually measure the sales right there. Uh, he can also understand, you know, what kind of activities I'm doing, uh, what is the ROI, what are the search trends. So somewhere uh, I believe that at least for a digital first brand, uh, marketing is leading the way. Similarly, it does not mean that, you know, the role of other departments uh, get to lag behind. It does not mean that. So similarly, if I say that somebody has to expand their vocabulary, it has to be a uh, finance department, legal department, because the kind of challenges uh, challenges uh, it brings to the table, they are totally different. So as uh, Kunal said, uh, no finance guy would like to understand that, okay, if I did the marketing, the searches on Google are like this, why the searches on Amazon are different, right? So you have to understand that uh, for, for these uh, old style or old school uh, ma uh, management personnel, uh, they have to learn a lot. 
and uh, somewhere tech and marketing is leading the way and uh, i think the challenge is on to the old department in the organization and how they can come up with this is something uh, would define how this partnership turns out to be yeah. but i think uh, innovation should not lie with just marketing and uh, uh, and technology it has to go towards every part of the organization and uh, pandemic has affected everyone and same way it goes for the companies also and it same way it uh, goes for the uh, sub organization or sub departments uh, within those uh, organization so somewhere uh, there has to be this uh, mentality or mindset that uh, digital will bring everybody along and somewhere tech and marketing will lead the way uh, to to enable that but yes uh, challenges are always there uh, just that questions have changed thanks again sales marketing marketing sales the same now you know shubhran i would like to come to you you have this amazing cpg experience as well and you have seen this partnership evolve uh, between sales marketing and other functions over the years what is your perspective on so i i think i agree with the panelists that the traditional boundary lines are getting very very fluid if not fuzzy between sales and marketing on the one hand between the technology stack and who owns it and the application stack or what is consumer facing i think raman was mentioning that there is now a continuum between the cmo the you know chief digital officer and in a sense the chief experience officer where there are none it's an all in one you know the chief marketing officer has to probably play the other two roles as well so yes i do agree that uh, job roles are also becoming hybrid and in a sense uh, you know focused on the omni channel uh, retail kind of an environment however i have two other builds on this one is that you know why should a consumer care you know it's, it 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 looks theoretically perfect to say are you having a conversation with the brand are you you know engaged with the brand and so on but you know we tend to look as marketers we tend to look at consumer engagements under a microscope and consumers tend to look at us with a telescope you know they have 100 other things happening in their life right from the emis to pay to boss tensions to you know 100 other problems that are clouding their mind unless you are really sensitive to iteratively touching them where it really matters you know you have to experiment as somebody was saying if the experiment pays on you really have to build on it very fast and if you fail you fail really early but the more you try the more you're likely to succeed in consumer terms so i think consumer relevance is not about doing some research at some point in time getting an insight and then you know framing a campaign around it i think going back to this single view of customer i think that's rare the ability to do it has never been easier it's never easier to do it but it's never been more difficult to get it done because you know the wealth of data the kind of interactions the multiplicity of sources it's becoming very different uh, world now and to have an integrated sense now everybody says digital things are turning digital because consumer lifestyles are going digital i mean you know you and i and all of us here have 10 social media relationships we are on dark social i get things on whatsapp those are the stimuli that move us to making decisions i was reading just day before yesterday about a bank in belgium called kbc if i think if i remember right that has bid and won the online broadcast rights for the belgian soccer league they're going to show it on their bank app banking app because they believe they have a great app and people who are on other banking apps will come there because they want to watch football and once they do that they will be able to ping them so this is the nature of, or you know let's say walmart's open admission of wanting to take a stake in tiktok because they realize tomorrow tiktok can be a real transaction platform so i think just as the world is changing just as the channel dynamics are changing just as the job descriptions are changing so is also the consumer reality changing or perhaps because the consumer reality is changing everything else is changing around it and i think we should be welcoming this change and embracing this change otherwise all of us you know as professionals as brands uh, run the risk of being obsolete so the ones who welcome the change and embrace it are the ones who will survive and thrive absolutely well, i'll just uh, step in here you know since you spoke about uh, the 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 sports and the bank app or a bank using sports as a lever uh, to engage the traffic on their app you know uh, I, i lead a marketing and i lead a marketing media and sports advisory for the firm also so 
don't be surprised if in india you know very soon in times to come you will see a lot of uh, fintech players and the other consumer uh, you know uh, facing uh, large apps starting to bid for the digital rights of uh, key sporting properties mm-hmm. now there are so many new leagues coming up for example coco league or this is a volleyball league or many other leagues mlb is going to launch in india so so you you are absolutely spot on you know and the whole the, the key message there is that how do i become more and more relevant to the uh, to the consumer how do i increase the time wallet share of the consumer on my property if that happens then i will gradually make ad revenues also and of course i'll also have my core business uh, growing whether it is fintech or retail or consumer or whatever it is i think that's a that's the at star you know i i was i was head of marketing for star sports for close to 5 years and and during that time all the leaks came out and one of the things that i learned in the process is you know content based engagement per se not sports alone but sports mm. because fans are passionate people say it's like bonding with cement or you know with adhesive it's not it's right. like velcro on right. cotton you, the more you engage the more it keeps hooking you on you know so i think uh, you know i'm surprised that it's not happened already what you're saying you know for for the likes of you know facebook and many other platforms it's small change to bid for very major sport broadcasting right as as an element of providing stickiness so i i'm i'm in agreement with you yeah facebook is started doing already big time and we'll see more and more people to uh, trying to do it now and the fact that the history as you said subhanshu sir right history suggests that companies that invest in innovation be it content led innovation or whatever through a crisis are the ones who outperforms during the recovery as well right? at the same time and let's look at 2007 you know last quarter right the s&p index who innovated stayed on and they actually performed well during the recovery so what's happening is point about also have at the organizational <laughs> level right uh, you know i think somebody was mentioning i think kunal was mentioning that the board is asking how do we change everything how do we put everything online you know the brochureware and the catalogs and so on and that's true of our lives as well you know uh, uh, because the pandemic forced a certain digital primacy in our lives that everybody started doing zoom everybody started doing you know all means you know uh, uh, digital payments digital shopping all of this came into our lives and actually made us survive the pandemic in many ways so i think what's true at the individual level is even more true at the organization absolutely amit over to you what are your thoughts how have you seen organizational partnerships changing not changing finance chief people officers right so of course employee experience as raman said it's also a key part of it what have you seen amit you are on mute if you can I'm so sorry. I'll just take a little detour from what we actually we heard from the views of how the sales and marketing. I think this is this is traditionally from ages and ages and this discussion happened. But I think today what I've observed and think is the discussion has gone beyond what sales and marketing. I think within the marketing scene you need to have a very very specialized roles across. Otherwise you can't win the battle that you need to have. So it can't be just say you are general marketer, you are a marketing man. It doesn't work in today's day and age. You can't say you're because digital is the third word after technology and synergy, uh, which is. used or abused or underused in the entire ecosystem today and why i say so is because today just by saying that i am a digital marketer doesn't help you need to have what do you do in digital how does it actually work in digital and what value that you bring on table you just can't. that's what i say i think more than the blurred between the sales and the marketing within the marketing you need to have specialist roles you need to have, have specialists to do that and i tell you in last one and a half two years we try to build that because Generic rules is not able to give you what you need to be. So if somebody says I'm a performance marketer, that's a very good title and a fancy title to put it on LinkedIn. But that doesn't what you actually substantiate for that particular role to build it. And I think today one thing which is very very clear is the knowledge of technology and the also the availability of technology is a must for everyone. And with this yeah. all the phenomena, uh, the proposition of no code, no code today. I think it is it is no more a time that you need to go to at least go to find out can I get five crores to get this particular technology. No, I think the days have gone today. You decide what you want to do. What is the return? And I think uh, there is a lot of discussion. I always always feel little uh, little dejected when people talk about this ROI is always return on investment. But some particular pardon me saying so some finance guy, some banker give it. But if you see from a marketing lens, from a consumer angle, it is more to do with con. return on insights and return on innovation how are i am actually trying to invest and what are the insights i am getting and how it is helping me in the entire value chain to bring so my point uh, and the point which i am trying to make uh, vishak is it is it is not to do with sales and marketing the fight is within the marketing how are you actually bringing that entire 
professionalism which is having a specialist role within the marketing team to build it and just to uh, i think amit also uh, since you said it is not just about sales and marketing and very rightly so think, amit also, you rightly put it it is also not just about uh, interdepartmental or in, within the company it's a time of collaboration beyond the company you know whether it is the partner ecosystem or the other retail ecosystem or the startup ecosystem which is relevant for your business i think it's a time of much larger collaboration that is uh, that's coming into it now. also just just a very small point ramon building one of i think two weeks back one of the investors because we have also a listed company one of the investors asked me that who you think is the brand evangelist for you in your organization so i told everybody the entire 20000 employees right from a factory to a receptionist to a call center everybody is a brand specialist because your moment of truth that you actually decide any of the interaction that you do with anybody in your organization that is and that person becomes the brand evangelist for you in that particular point so it doesn't make which department yeah. that you work in what you do it, it's all about you represent a particular brand and you have to be in that particular sense and the narrative of the brand that you actually talk about yeah absolutely spot on we we termed it as a as a authentic uh, informal leaders in one of our culture yeah. strategy report you know of some time yeah. back pretty much the same thing it's about brand evangelist yeah totally agree on that Vaishak, you're on mute. Yeah, sorry about that. Absolutely, we don't decide the channel, but the customer does. So, where, whomsoever is the person at the end of that particular channel, they are the brand ambassador of your brand. Yeah, well said. Thank you, Raman. I would hand it over to you for you to actually ask the question to our panel members. Yeah, no, I think I've been. Uh, it's a, it's been a good discussion, and uh, since we discussed a bit about uh, single source of truth, you know, Amit, you, you and Shubhranch, you spoke about, you know. a single view of customer you know uh, pretty much you know two three times and i agree i may i would want to ask question you know and this is what we have been discussing a lot i i always give an analogy of newspaper industry when it comes to it uh, you know go to any large newspaper uh, group you know i won't name them but the likes you know who have uh, who have you know by 10 million subscriber you know some of them actually claim to have 10 crores you know uh, as as a readership base and and sitting with one of the promoter asked that okay you got a 10 crore readership base that's a that's a great by the way asset that you got you know consumer how much of how many of those 10 crores do you know and that's where you know uh, that's where you know it starts falling into cracks because the industry has been run in a in a very very typical b2b manner where yeah. the visibility goes off moment it is at the distributor and the hawker right so 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 you but the commodity the product is a consumer uh, product it is not an enterprise product so look at the analogy you know you are into a consumer business but you your visibility you know ends at the distributor and hawker yeah. and then you say that you know i am getting into red my industry is suffering because people have moved to digital and that's where i give my example i am an avid reader of hindustan times for i don't know maybe about 40 years and uh, if i may speak so i fall into a high propensity paying customer in digital for them but they don't even know me 40 years of avid reader of hindustan times you don't even know me then how will you capture me in, on my digital journey you know so so it's it's a, it's a so i always say that uh, that the demise of uh, or the or the gradual demise of the print industry over the years and over the next few years and the and the lack of revenue curve because of digital i think the industry itself is to be blamed for it and that's where that's where my next question comes to you know to all of you is it is good to say that you know a single view of customer it is good to say that you know we got to we got to have insight of them i will ask a very quick rapid question let's say in two parts you know one where do you think you stand on a scale of let's say 1 to 10 on on knowing the universe of your consumer base which means if you have 10 million then you know how much of them do you really know so on the universe of knowing your consumer base and second on a scale of 1 to 10 how deep are you knowing them you know so for example you might know me as raman kalra age 40 40 45 plus north delhi or you might have actually invested deep down into mapping my consumer journey and my deep persona and my habits and etc we all know that so i'm not getting into that that's all but the question is on a scale of 1 to 10 how would you see knowing the cons- the universe of your consumers and the depth of your consumers maybe amit if i start with you and then shubhranchu 
so i'll say the first thing which is uh, i would say a scale of 1 to 10 would be 4 and second would be 5 and i'll tell you why i say the, and just 4 or 5 is reason is see this this the point to say in terms of one view of the customer first of all you need to know who is the customer Correct. that's the bigger challenge should and, and i think ramon you you spot on with this example of uh, the print industry if you see if you have the database of the 10 crore people who are actually there with you on a newspaper you will not wait for a sports news that has happened the event that has happened today from tomorrow morning to read you would have immediately yeah. reached out to them through an app or something directly as a personalized message so for example amit tiwari ramal kalra are very interested in soccer and this is the game happening at 12 o'clock in the night i will get it 12 1 what is the update i will not wait for tomorrow the hawker will give the newspaper and my engagement yeah. and interaction will be much much higher uh, the larger point is today see everybody talks about and i think it's, it's a good uh, platform to talk about in terms of what's the view of the consumer but who is the consumer that is more important i and i think an example in a, in a category like a air conditioner the buyer is a is the male earning household but the user is the entire family that becomes a very very differentiated fact who is the final consumer and i think to be keeping the hand to the heart and since i'm actually addressing or uh, addressing the entire marketing fraternity i have hardly found it i've answered asking this answers to most of the people nobody has a very 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 bright answer on that that i would really admit on that and and who is the influencer you picked up the example of air conditioner absolutely I, i need to buy an air conditioner as we speak because one of my rooms i want to replace the air conditioner and i was very clear you know we'll buy for a for a decent 1.5 ton capacity i thought let's buy a 2 ton air ac and my wife said if the new ac comes it has to be hot and cold now because she feels so 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 the who is the influencer behind the scene also becomes a yeah, absolutely absolutely yeah so when you what do you think about this whole two, two dimensional thing i think as royal enfield we are quite blessed because i think it's a very tight focused brand with a very yeah. sort of you know very very you know cohesive and adoring community which has I been agree. consciously and i think uh, siddharth our md has been very very conscious conscious about the fact that we are a lifestyle proponent we are not only about the motorcycle we are about motorcycling so i would say on this although your question is very profound and i mean if i was answering it in another dimension as marketers per se it would be very different scores but i think for brand royal enfield i'd say it would be a it would be a 7 and a 9 in my assessment although ah, cool us but yeah, i would but, agree but, but what we are trying to a lot of brands will have to be coming to you now to learn <laughs> how did you get endeavor, that score our endeavor so that's always you know pushing this our endeavor is that let's not understand their motivations only as riders right i mean while we put the rider at the heart of the community uh, at the heart of everything we do but that's still a somewhat monochromatic view right because a person who adores motorcycling whose passion is motorcycling also has four or five other passions in life they may be interested in cuisine in adventure in mountaineering in astral photography in fashion in adventure you know so we are try- in fitness so we are trying now to see where the circles intersect and can we arrange rides which take people to hanle and then they can sh- or kutch and then they can shoot the night sky Uh, raman you were out to himachal recently uh, yeah. you know can we can we take people to roads that have never been traveled before and that's the proposition of a motorcycle called himalayan which is all roads or no roads so i would say that even though we may know their motivations to come to royal enfield or want to be a royal enfield rider we need to put a lot more color and complexion to who they are as persons so what we do and why prefer us are two different things we need to work on both fronts and just finally one other thing raman is that you know consumer is easier to understand than consumer journey and i think you know any any company in the world that has opened you know a, a web front has a website has an app can say oh you know what i have started my digital journey but it could still be happening in silos and they you know they are not on scale or they don't connect across the board consumer motivations decide get decided and get developed in their journeys you know what i got a promotion or i got a hefty bonus this is the time to buy my dream motorcycle or the pandemic lockdown is lifted now i want to ride from delhi to jaipur visit my parents need to get that servicing done these are triggers and journeys that then they don't care about oh your servicing department your call center your retail your finance you know they are only looking at the motivation and that's why from a retail standpoint if i may go back it's very important because when somebody walks into our dealer they are walking into royal enfield they don't care you know that this is a dealer establishment this is a company establishment or so on and so forth so the world is changing fast 
as marketers more than understanding the consumer understand the triggers and the consumer journeys and and i think that that will be the beginning of some solutioning and that's very yeah. important yeah i think that's a great uh, great one shubhranshu thanks for actually bringing it up because you guys uh, clearly are a case study on that not just a case study on how well you know your consumers but it's a great case study on how as you rightly said it's not about motorcycles it's about motorcycling right. and how that has you know been being you know imbibed into uh, the personas and the you know and the it's almost like a cult you know uh, i had i was having this discussion we were driving through in my in my trip last few days when we were crossing punjab uh, before entering himachal you know there you see a lot of bullets you know they 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 have a fascination for uh, riding a bullet right they did not and feel not not you know uh, the new age of bike but that uh, sound making bullet is there you know a fascination for them. and the whole question came that you know uh, why is that uh, you know uh, a lot of people i know for example i'll i'll, I'll give a deviate from enfield and go to java if you excuse me for that so one of the promoter of a, of of a, of close to a 20 billion dollar company in india indian run global mncs among the top 3 worldwide in the space in the 20 billion dollar is the promoter founder he went on lela da kona java so so one of my friend i was showing to one of my friend and he said why would he go on a java you know like for example obvious question i think it's not about how much does the motorcycle cost it's the fact that it's a cult in people's mind it's a religion so so people who are into royal enfield you know they will they will they are there because they believe in that brand they are they are you know passionate about the brand and the whole experience that comes with that so i think thanks for bringing this up it's a great case study uh, uh moving on the same question gagan to you on a on the same you know two dimensional knowing your consumers so so uh, raman i'll i'll answer this question very differently i think given that you know we have all marketers here uh, i think most marketers knew uh, the communication for which kind of consumer they are creating for and which consumer are going to buy this product and that's why you know we always say that we want to make a premium product and this kind of premium agery but ultimately people who are buying up most of them may be actually less running low on money also right so the tg you target in your communication and tg which end up uh, buying you is a very different story and it is it is very important that we should know both of these universes yeah right unless you don't know these two universes you cannot uh, merge them in the future and uh, somewhere uh, i believe that most of the marketers are good in the first part that identifying universe on the both side the uh, making communication for and who are consuming communication uh, but when it comes to deep down you know how do we do we know them better what do what do they want what is what are their preferences i think uh, most of us as a brand are not doing great job and obviously royal enfield is an exception i think there is nobody who's Uh, have never thought of buying an enfield whether their fathers would not allow or allow that's a different story but uh, that's the kind of sense you want to create in uh, you know in the young audience that okay this product is there and uh, it why why it changes your life it may or may not but how it changes your life that's the perception you should be able to create and this is where i think uh, on this panel uh, royal enfield is a great case study uh, with that being said there are localization differences also so that's why you know you have all kind of technology you can create single point of view but when it comes to uh, you know how do you connect with the consumer it's a totally different story so that's why you know uh, what you can do with the technology is a different thing but who do you stand for is a very very important thing and can you define in your communication uh, is a very difficult task and uh, i'll give one example and harley davidson works very well in us but they do, uh, no longer exist in india right so so what do you stand for and who do you stand for is something uh, uh, i always keep it as a mantra that you know if you want to deep down understand your consumer really well uh, there will be technology helps there will be different kind of methodology research you will use but somewhere as personally at my level uh, i feel that on the second part i'll rate really really low like two or three what are the on, on the universe side probably seven and eight i know you know who do i want to target and which product it suits for very good i think uh, that that's 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 two is uh, it's it's a fair a uh, fair admission you know uh, and i'm glad that you know you are, you are open into in saying this that you know it is true because the fact is that most of the brands have to invest more and do a lot more about it on the uh, harley davidson piece uh, i just hope keep my fingers crossed i hope ford doesn't go out now with the whole changes happening in the ford uh, story in india but 
Uh, Amit, with a little twist to the question, you know, so that you know, it's you not... don't have Trump anymore. Sorry, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have Trump anymore. <laughs> so, Amit, uh, coming to you with a little, little add on to that question, since Gagan spoke about TG and the campaigns and the brand story and the content around it, uh, you know, uh, would you would you think that uh, you know the campaigns that you know you run or, or or let's say the market, the whole market mix modeling that you know uh, uh, which which we have been using in the in the post pandemic environment for you has that gone you know uh, through a dramatic shift or you think uh, not much has changed no i think uh, raman a uh, very important point i think uh, it has uh, shifted from definitely from three different tangents uh, primarily uh, and we all know that empathy and brand purpose as you started with your particular uh, narrative is, is very very important and we knew oh, it from yeah. ages and ages but what has happened is we were somehow fit because of our mm-hmm. daily lives or it has actually missed out or it has just taken the back burner today today the brand purpose with empathy has actually taken in all the communication that you do nobody is interested in what product features that you provide and what is the uh, essence of how much of the 3d that rendition of the product that you can actually do second thing is can you actually make it uh, linguistic technology and and that is very very big demand which people i'm yeah. not interested you may be a north brand or south brand but can you speak the language which i understand and also in the technology that i adapt or the technology which i interface it is very very important today which was not there before and i'll tell you there are a lot of influencer who works in our particular category whether it is a architects interior designers electrician they are very very well connected because today i can't call them for any seminars today neither an online nor but how i can actually communicate in their language in the medium in which they actually operate third is you don't need contact today today you need to have a connect and i think your connect is more important than the contact today that has changed the entire market mix modeling also in terms of the approach to the market has actually changed nobody is interested in today the how many brochures and leaflets that you actually provide but whatever you are providing is providing in my particular context and also the way and i want to do it which is much more comprehensible today and i can connect that cord with your particular brand that is why if you see most of the communication that we are also trying to change is also about making it see we are talking about consumer experience perfectly fine but also there is two tangents to the entire experience is about safe experience i don't want to get something and safe experience not only from a uh, health or hygiene standpoint but also from my data privacy standpoint why should i actually give access to some people which i don't think is something which is which is very open to it so your point is absolutely bang on uh, raman the changes have happened and it will also change the the needle has already started moving and the change will also come because what has happened today for last two different years if you see 50 to 60% products in india are are primarily basically seasonal products in by next year you will see most of these things will actually be a very very different tangent in totality Yeah, yeah. I think that's I, a that's a. I'd like yeah, to I, have this conversation forever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> I we we have time in our hands. I would like to end it with one rapid fire question, right? And Kunal, I would like to start this with you, right? Which is sure. tell us the audience the one unforgettable lesson that the pandemic has taught you about the business. i think adapt change change and change i think that's that's the most important thing uh, you know disruption is here to stay yeah. for everyone and you need to adapt to it and move on very quickly um, that's 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 how i would put it you know it's it's a matter of survival and um, you need to be out there take the right thing take the right decisions and move very quickly adapt and change well said subhran so, if i can go to you Yeah. Sorry, I said the pandemic may have brought it sharper into focus. What we already knew, I think uh, for me it's personally that we are a small planet, we are a small world community, and we are all in this together. You know, so so there's no place to go except here. Three will say. Yeah, again, if I can go to you, I think uh, it has to be invest on experience, not on expansion. uh whichever kind of customer you have uh focus on them give them best experience and expansion will happen should happen automatically yeah. very clever very clever raman what's your take well my take on this would be uh vaishak uh, uh however small or big you are you know you got to adopt a startup mentality to survive in the changing times because it's an agile world which keeps changing a lot so one got to be really a, a startup frame of mind 
you know, look at Amazon, look at Google. They are not startups, but they are the biggest organizations in the world, but they always work like a startup. So I think that's the mantra to success on the agility. And second, uh, go very sharp and bold on uh, tech-driven innovations. True, true. Amit, what's the biggest lesson? Sorry, I would say reskill and recalibrate. Unless and until you reskill yourself, it is very difficult for anybody, whether it's marketer, whether it's consumer, and whether it is anybody. And recalibrate your entire consumer decision journey and map with consumer digital journey. That's what I say. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. You know, amazing, amazing thoughts as lessons, right? Go all in, adapt and change, reskill, start a mentality, and invest in experience. So these are profound thoughts today. Thank you so much, our esteemed panelists, for sharing this.